everybody, how's it going? As you can see, this is going to be a big review video in which we're going to take a look at the entire Bomberman trilogy for the Turbo Graphics and PC Engine. We're going to look at Bomberman, Bomberman 93, and Bomberman 94. Now, underneath Bomberman 94, we got Gate of Thunder. So, what does this have to do with Bomberman? Well, the first time I got to play Bomberman on the Turbo Graphics was through Gate of Thunder. Well, this is actually a three-in-one disc that contains Gate of Thunder, Box Adventure, and Box Revenge. This was bundled with a Turbo Duo. I remember back in high school, a classmate of mine told me that Bomberman was hidden in this disc. When you went to the game select screen and you highlighted Gate of Thunder, you press up, right, down, left, and button two, and a bell rang and Bomberman was playable. Now, Bomberman on the Turbo Graphics was not the first game in the series, but as you're gonna see in this video, it has a lot to offer, most notably the battle mode, which was playable by up to five players. Bomberman 93 and 94 adds more to the, bomb, to the, to the first Bomberman game on the Turbo Graphics, so for me, it only made sense to cover the entire, the entire trilogy in one video. So, sit back, relax, and enjoy. Let's start things off with Bomberman. Released in 1990, the story is set in a future where Dr. Mitsumori created two Bomberman. The white Bomberman was programmed for good and the black Bomberman due to a programming error went berserk. Later the black Bomberman breaks into Dr. Mitsumori's laboratory and kidnaps his daughter Lisa and takes her away to the mechanical castle. Bomberman must blast his way through 8 rounds containing 64 levels to defeat Black Bomberman and his gang and rescue Lisa. You must go through walls, mountains, a river, forests, caves, and finally the mechanical castle. These areas are inhabited by creatures that are an odd mix resembling slugs, balloons, fish, alligators, penguins, smiley faces, bats, coins, and others that are hard to describe. At the 8th level of each round, you fight bosses such as a snake-like reptile, bubble creatures, and one-eyed ghosts. Levels are arranged in a rectangular enclosure in either a single 13x11 tile screen, or in multiple screens that are arranged either vertically or horizontally. Levels contain two types of blocks. Soft blocks can be blown up and are randomly placed. Indestructible blocks cannot be destroyed and are placed one tile apart from each other or from a wall in all directions. The objective of each stage is to defeat all enemies by blasting them with your bombs and finding the exit. Stages must be completed in a 4 minute time limit or else the screen overflows with enemies almost guaranteeing defeat, though it is possible to survive and clear the stage. When a bomb is dropped, it remains idle for a couple of seconds before detonating, creating a blast radius that runs vertically and horizontally like a plus sign, destroying any enemy, player, or soft block in its path. Bomb blasts do not go through walls, soft blocks while they're being destroyed, or indestructible blocks. If a blast touches another bomb, that bomb detonates creating another blast and this process can be repeated to create a chain reaction, potentially destroying large amounts of enemies or blocks. At first, you can only drop one bomb at a time, but you will have the opportunity to lay out more as I'll explain later. Regular enemies differ in terms of movement speed and range. Bosses exhibit additional behaviors like teleportation, summoning other enemies, shooting flames that can detonate bombs, and shield protection from bomb blasts. For the most part, you must blast blocks to reach them except for bosses. The best way to defeat enemies is to trap them in areas where they have limited movement, as most foes cannot pass through bombs and soft blocks. You want to avoid blasting too many blocks or else they have a greater chance to escape. Some enemies can pass through soft blocks, making them harder to defeat because they're not as easy to trap like the others. For these foes, you want to lay out multiple bombs to trap them. An interesting dynamic of this game and the series as a whole is the random placement of the soft blocks and enemies. This can drastically alter the difficulty of a given stage. There are times when fast-moving enemies are placed close to Bomberman with few soft blocks between them, or fast-moving enemies that can pass through soft blocks while Bomberman is surrounded by them. In situations like this, you must act quickly or else it's a quick death. 
Level 87 is the worst offender of the latter situation, as I have lost many lives because the enemies approach me so quickly, I don't have enough time to free myself. You receive various point values for blasting enemies. If multiple enemies are destroyed in a single blast, their point values are doubled for each successive hit. For example, if an enemy is worth 200 points and three of that type are destroyed in a blast, you receive 200 points for the first one, 400 for the second, and 800 for the third. It is possible to earn tens of thousands of points from a single blast. When all enemies are defeated, an alarm sounds and a block flashes, which reveals a power-up when that block is blasted. You also need to blast blocks to find the exit. The power-up can be discovered during the level, so when the enemies are cleared, the block does not flash because there's just one power-up per stage. If you find the exit before defeating all enemies, you will not be able to enter it. Avoid blasting power-ups or the exit. If this happens, a swarm of enemies emerge from that location and you'll have your hands full in defeating them. Highly skilled players may want to do this to accumulate high point totals. Bomberman features plenty of power-ups to make your job easier when it comes to blasting enemies. A bomb icon increases the number of bombs you can drop at a time by one up to a maximum of ten. A flame icon increases your blast radius one tile at a time up to a maximum of five. Roller Skates gives you extra speed. A bomb icon with lines through it allows you to walk through bombs, which can save you if you accidentally trap yourself. A brick icon with lines through it allows you to walk through soft blocks. This is a time saver by not having to blast blocks to reach the enemies. A heart with a bomb in the middle gives you the option to detonate bombs at your own will. This makes it easier for you to blast enemies that are tough to trap. A bulletproof vest gives you temporary invulnerability from bomb blasts, but you could still lose a life if you touch an enemy. Finally, a Bomberman icon awards an extra life. If you lose a life, all power-ups you've accumulated are lost except for extra bombs, blasts, and speed. This also applies when you continue. Bomberman uses a password and save system if you don't want to continue your game or run out of continues. You must have a Turbo Booster Plus, Turbo Graphics, PC Engine, CD, or Duo to use the save feature. There are hidden bonuses to discover in Bomberman. One example is when you blast every soft block in a stage and the last one is the exit. A picture of Dr. Mitsumori appears and you receive a huge bonus when you grab it. The defining feature of Bomberman is the battle mode. This is playable in two ways. You can use a turbo tap to connect extra controllers or have two turbo express units with a link cable. Good luck on the latter. You have a choice of two playing modes, normal and skull. You can choose the number of players ranging from 2 to 5 and the number of wins ranging from 1 to 5. In normal mode, the players compete in a single screen stage alongside enemies where you must blast blocks to gain power ups and blow each other up. Whoever's the last person standing wins. If two or more players are blown up at the same time to end a game or time runs out, then the result is a draw. Skull mode has the same rules as normal mode but with one addition. Skull tiles appear underneath blocks and have negative effects if a player touches one. These effects are temporary and can be passed on to other players, including Bomberman moving at three times the normal speed, making him difficult to control, Bomberman moving at half speed, making it tough to evade bomb blasts, Bomb drops are disabled, bombs can be dropped automatically without the player's control, and the bomb blast radius is reduced to one tile. Now on to Bomberman 93. In this sequel, Black Bomberman is up to his old tricks. This time he wreaks havoc on the central computer system in Bomberman City, stealing the seven vital chips, putting the city in darkness. White Bomberman chases after him and Black Bomberman releases six of the chips across six planets and drops several bombs on White Bomberman to escape. Bomberman must go to each planet to recover the chips and then face off with his nemesis to recover the last one. Each planet takes place in different terrain. The first planet is set in the mountains and the following planets take place in the jungle, lava, desert, water, ice, and finally Black Bomberman's hideout in the computer planet. 
Each planet has 8 levels for a total of 56 levels. Before the start of the first level of each planet, Bomberman reviews a data file of the boss in the computer room. The objective for completing a level remains unchanged from the previous game. Destroy all enemies and find the exit. What has changed for Bomberman 93 is the layout of some levels. The outer walls have more corners, terrain features are added to the playing field, and the indestructible portions are joined together to give the stages a maze-like appearance, making the levels more diverse. Overall, the stages in Bomberman 93 are more detailed than its predecessor, and to give it a comical look, you'll find Bomberman floating on tubes in the jungle or shoveling snow on the ice planet. Many of the enemies from the first Bomberman game return in the sequel to go along with the new cast. These new enemies have a more cartoon-like appearance. They exhibit new behavior patterns including jellyfish and ice monsters that release projectiles that defuse bombs. Some enemies destroy soft blocks. There are enemies that place landmines which detonate when touched. Landmines are also set off from bomb blasts. Some enemies can evade bomb blasts by jumping, burrowing underground, or taking cover in their protective shell, making them tough to defeat unless the bomb placement is timed correctly. There's one enemy who is a bomb that detonates when destroyed. Some of the larger enemies takes two hits to defeat. The bosses are much larger in this game and they have more tricks up their sleeves, including some that can fly to avoid bomb blasts. The stone statue boss in the desert can only take damage in certain parts. Once you defeat a boss, you recover one of the chips and are treated to a comical illustration of Bomberman interacting with the boss. New power-ups are introduced in Bomberman 93. Picking up a heart protects you from one hit by an enemy, projectile, or blast. Line Bombs gives Bomberman the ability to lay out a full line of bombs by tapping the button twice. The number of bombs released is dependent on the number of extra bombs you picked up and if you are near any soft blocks or walls. Bomberman can also kick bombs across the screen until it makes contact with the enemy or other object. This is useful for blowing things up from a distance. Grabbing a clock freezes all enemies for 20 seconds. There is a power down item, Sandals, which reduces your movement speed. You can regain your speed by picking up roller skates. In some of the later stages, you can pick up more than one power up. In addition to the changes in level design that I mentioned earlier, special tiles are placed in some stages which have different effects. There are teleportation tiles which transports Bomberman to a different section of the level. When you emerge from these tiles, you'll be invulnerable to enemy contact and bomb blasts for a few seconds. If you teleport to a spot where there are lots of enemies, leave a bomb and teleport again to escape in hopes that the bomb blast clears them and then return. You might have to do this a few times to allow safe passage. In some levels, teleportation is necessary because parts of the stage are cut off by terrain features like lava, making navigation impossible on foot. There are anti-bomb tiles which prevents you from laying bombs on them. They can also stop bombs if they are kicked towards them. Some stages have conveyor belts which move the player and bombs along the direction they move when they are on them. There are doors that can be rotated but only in the direction shown on the block in the center of the doors. Pay close attention to this or else you might find yourself trapped if you're trying to escape from an approaching enemy or a bomb you just placed. You can manipulate the movement of the doors to contain the enemy's range of movement. In some stages, soft blocks reform after being destroyed. With the combination of new enemy and boss behaviors and attack patterns along with the stage layouts, the difficulty has been ramped up for the sequel. For example, you'll have to do a lot more dodging in the boss fights, and with enemies being harder to defeat, there are times you may run out of time to complete a stage. New features were added to the battle mode in Bomberman 93. The number of participants is no longer restricted to the number of controllers plugged in, thus matches can be a combination of human and computer controlled players, allowing you to play this mode on your own if no one else is present. There are now 8 arenas to choose from and each one lists their special tiles, providing a different challenge for each stage. Death tiles are now incorporated into the standard matches and there are additional status effects if you touch one. They include reverse controls, automatic movement of the player, bombs detonate quicker, bombs detonate slower, and trading places on screen with another player. Once again, you can pass your status effect onto another player by touching them. Once the clock is below the one minute mark, 
indestructible blocks begin to form around the perimeter of the stage, reducing the size of the playing area. Once a match is over, you're treated to a scene of the winner being raised in the air in victory showing off a nice zoom effect. Last but not least here is Bomberman 94. This is the only game in the trilogy that was not released for the Turbo Graphics in the US. In this installment, a new force threatens Bomberman's home. Bagara and his army unleash an attack on the bomber planet, breaking apart the spirit pictures the source of the planet's protection. This causes a rift splitting the planet into five sections. Bomberman must recover the spirit picture pieces to restore his planet hull. Within each section of the planet you can select which level to play, thus they can be completed in any order. Compared to the previous two games, there are fewer levels in this one, but many of them are longer as I will explain later. The sections of the bomber planet are set in different environments. First you'll go through the jungle, then a volcano, the sea, a castle, and snow. Once these sections are cleared, Bomberman moves on to the enemy base which is on board a comet. The levels are more detailed than the ones in the previous games, with plenty of walls, bridges, stairs, and dead ends to give them more depth, plus some nice animations and effects like the wave effect in the sea. Some of these details impact bombs as they cannot be placed on stairs or bridges, nor can their blasts go through them. These levels have specific features that can put Bomberman in danger or be used to his advantage. In the volcanic section, lava rains down on the playing field which stuns Bomberman, destroys blocks, and detonates any bombs they land on. There are mine carts that Bomberman can ride which destroys enemies and soft blocks it runs into. Some areas can only be reached by mine cart. There are levels in the castle that are shrouded in darkness with only a small light radius to guide Bomberman. There are barrels you can release which rolls down the playing field, flattening everything in its path including Bomberman which immobilizes him for a few seconds. In the snowy areas there are penguins that launch rockets with the same effects as the lava. In the enemy base, steam shoots out a boiler stunning Bomberman. Beware of blocks with skulls. They explode with a bomb blast. You can use this to make a chain reaction to blast multiple enemies. Finally, there are spinning wheels that can launch Bomberman across the screen. These wheels can only be entered one way, so be careful not to trap yourself. The biggest addition to Bomberman 94 are Ruiz, also known as Louis, which are kangaroo-like animals that provide special abilities to aid Bomberman. They can be found by uncovering an egg when blowing up a soft block. When Bomberman touches the egg, it hatches and he rides on top of them. Ruiz come in five colors, each representing a different ability as follows. Purple Ruiz can jump over soft blocks, enemies, bombs, and bomb blasts one tile at a time. Blue Ruiz can kick bombs over soft blocks and walls. If a kick bomb goes over a wall, it ends up on the other side of the field. Green Ruiz can dash for extra speed, which I find is most useful for evading boss attacks. Yellow Ruiz can kick soft blocks, which alters their layout, to free up a passage to reach keys or other items. This ability is useful for trapping enemies. Finally, Pink Ruiz can dance, but serve no other purpose. If a Rui makes contact with an enemy, enemy projectile, or a bomb blast, they will disappear, but Bomberman will be spared, so this allows for an extra hit. If you defeat a boss with a Rui, he cannot be carried over to the next section. The objective for clearing a stage has changed for Bomberman 94. Instead of defeating all enemies and uncovering the exit, you must destroy keys that are scattered across each stage. The number of keys is shown at the top of the screen. Some keys are carried by enemies. When you defeat them, they'll drop the key and then you can blow it up. Don't stand on the tile where the key drops or else you'll lose a life. There's a capsule that holds a piece of the spirit picture that must be recovered. Once all keys are destroyed, the capsule shatters and you can pick up the fragment. In some levels, blowing up all the keys opens a door you must enter which takes you to the next part of the stage. Some levels contain as many as three sections. Once you obtain the spirit picture fragment, any remaining enemies disappear and all soft blocks turn into coins and you have 15 seconds to grab as many as you can. Each coin is worth 500 points and you earn extra lives at certain point totals. 
While you can rack up high scores by grabbing coins, you want to blow up as many soft blocks as possible to find power-ups as each stage contains several of them. Once Bomberman finds the last piece of a spirit picture, he is taken to a boss battle which consists of enemies tailored to each section, like a monkey controlling a robotic banana in the jungle, a giant crab in the ocean, and a vampire bat in the castle. Once a boss is defeated, the final piece of the spirit picture is restored and Bomberman moves on to the next section. Another change for Bomberman 94 is that once a level is completed, you can go back and revisit it. Now you ask, why would I do that? If you lose all your lives and continue, your power-ups for extra speed, bombs, and blasts are gone. Also, Bomberman 94 only utilizes passwords to resume a game at a later point. To regain your power-ups, your best option is to revisit completed levels or sections. This is especially true if you are continuing at or near a boss battle, otherwise you'll be stuck fighting a boss with minimal firepower. When you revisit a level, you don't need to destroy keys. Pick up what you can and head straight to the capsule to exit the stage. If you continue or resume a game in Bagura's base, you cannot go back to the previous sections. If you lose your last life at any point in Bagura's base, including the final boss, you must restart the base from the beginning, which I will tell you can be frustrating. More features were added to the battle mode for Bomberman 94 to make it even more fun and chaotic. Once again, you can choose the number of participants regardless of how many controllers are plugged in. Each player can choose their own sprite, which is a cool addition. Skulls are once again a big part of the battle mode and Ruiz are available as well. A big change in battle mode is that you have the option to play in teams. Players can be assigned in up to two teams so you can have matchups like 2 on 2 or 3 against 1. Be aware that blasts from your bombs eliminates your teammate. There are now 10 arenas to choose from, each with its own theme, with some of them containing special conditions. In the lava arena there are no soft blocks and each player can drop up to 5 bombs at a time with maximum blast radius plus bomb kicks. This was designed for quick matches with some lasting fewer than 10 seconds in the recordings I did. There's a high speed arena where all players move at 3 times the normal speed, so don't blink or also get lost in a shuffle. In the castle arena there are trap doors that move Bomberman and bombs to other parts of the arena. In the city arena there are arrows placed all over the field which guides the direction of the bomb's movement if a bomb is kicked towards an arrow. Some arenas have terrain that cover portions of the playing area, providing a great hiding spot for bombs. Some arenas have spectators that cheer whenever a player is eliminated. The victors of each match celebrate on stage in the Bomberman Theater in front of a packed crowd. Alright, so that is the Bomberman Trilogy for the Turbo Graphics and PC Engine. Now one of the things I enjoy about the Bomberman series for this system is of course the graphical presentation. It's very, the stages are very colorful, you have lots of details, lots of animations, especially in Bomberman 93 and 94, which make the stages feel so alive. And then you have the, en the character and enemy sprites, the opening intro and the endings all have a cartoon look to it, so it has a very comical appearance, which doesn't take itself too seriously. The ga games like that, for me, they're just so fun to play. And then there's the gameplay itself. The, the, the strategic element of knowing where and when to place the bombs. You know, there's a lot of strategy in that. And you know, the timing of it you know, makes a difference of whether you get through a level or not. And especially, especially in the case of the bosses. And then there's also the dynamics of how within a given stage you have the random placement of the soft blocks and enemies which gives you a different playing experience each time, especially in the later levels of each game when the enemies are more aggressive. And then of course there's the soundtrack. It has very, very catchy, memorable tunes, especially the, the first stage of the first Bomberman game. Well, of course that theme's been reused so many times but even in the past and also in future games. And then another thing is of course the battle mode. You know the first spot, the first Turbo Graphics Bomberman game. You know got things off to a good start. You have you know all sorts of power ups. You even have like power. I guess you could say power down items with the skull. And then Bomberman ninety three ninety four kind of takes it to another level with throwing in so many so many new stages. 
new um, new conditions that drastically affect uh, the gameplay within a given stage. And this stuff will give you lots of replay value. So they're great games to play when you have friends over. And then the the overall the Bomberman games on the Turbo Graphics one built upon the other to the point where the first Turbo Graphics Bomberman game can be can be obsolete because of so much more that they added with new stages, different layouts, more enemies, new power-ups. But I still say that the first Bomberman game on the Turbo Graphics is fun to play. All three of them are, are absolute must-have must-haves for the system. And also, they really set the tone for Bomberman games released for other systems. Let's say, for example, Saturn Bomberman, which the game plays very similar to Bomberman 94, but even adds and builds upon that by having interact uh, objects that you can interact with in some stages. Let's say, for example, the cannons. Um, you have even more power-ups introduced. You have um, the battle mode. You have 10-player action. You can have online multiplayer. So that's just like one example right there of how future Bomberang games were, insp were inspired from the ones that were released on the Turbo Graphics. And Bomberman, Bomberman 93 and 94 are all very affordable if you're looking to pick up a physical copy. You, for the most part, including shipping, you can probably get them for around $20 a piece. Now, of course, the U.S. versions of Bomberman and Bomberman 93 are going to cost you a lot more. And on top of that, Bomberman 93 and 94 are going to be available for the TurboGrafx Mini, so those are two great reasons to pick that up. All right, so that's all I have for now. I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you soon.